Brittany Gatchel. I know you didn't really experience indoctrination as a child, but I'm curious as to if you feel like there are some ideas you learned in Scientology that still stick with you today. There may be some things that you intellectually understand are incorrect, but are there some things that have just stayed with you? Thanks for the question, Brittany. And the reason I want to take this up is because I don't know that I've ever clearly on this show differentiated my ideas about indoctrination versus education. I've talked about this recently with um, Benjamin Boyce on hit on uh, a podcast we did that'll be coming, I think, next week. And I've, I've dropped this in a couple other places in interviews and talks with other people. But let me say that I was indoctrinated as a child into, into Scientology. I mean, there was no question about that. I was taught, and, and, and by indoctrination, I mean... I was force-fed a series of ideas about life and myself that I had no ability to think critically about. And that's indoctrination. When When you are not invited to or not able to think about the information that's being given to you in a critical fashion, question it, chew on it, look at it, you know, see how it might work, how it might not work, where it's applicable, where it's not applicable. That's critical thinking about an idea. And indoctrination is the opposite of that. It is, here is this idea. It is true. I don't care what you think about it. It's true. And you're going to accept it. And some degree of social pressure, parental pressure, societal pressure is put on you to accept that piece of information uncritically. Don't think about it. Or, With children, and this is where I really feel very strongly about this, with children, when you indoctrinate them in religious principles about which are faith-based ideas that they cannot think critically about yet because they simply, their brain hasn't grown enough and they haven't had enough experience to learn how to think critically. I'm talking about five, six, seven, eight, nine-year-olds. You know, they're barely getting up to the point at that level where they're where they're really able to think thoughts through. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm not trying to infantilize, you know, nine or ten year olds, but you know, let's let's look at what they can and can't think with, what their experiences cover and what they don't. If you start feeding a four year old, a five year old, this is how the world is. You really you need to be careful about what information you're putting into that, that sponge that is just absorbing everything that's coming in and accepting it and look and, and this is truth. This is how it is, right? When you indoctrinate a child with times tables, with division, with how to do long division and stuff, you're giving them, you know, clear-cut methods to figure things out. You have to indoctrinate them. You're not asking them to think about it. You're saying two times two equals four. Memorize that, right? Three times three equals nine. Memorize that. That's just how it is. There, there's no questioning that. And that's how I learned my times tables. And, you know, and, and uh, that's how I learned what the sounds of my language are and how to read. You know, it, was, it wasn't a matter of here's the word. What do you think about it? It's that's the word. That's how you say it, right? So that's indoctrination. It doesn't have to be bad. I'm trying to point out that it doesn't have a value connected with it, and it's how you use it as to whether it's good or bad. And and religious indoctrination that happened to me laid in the ideas that I was an immortal spiritual being who was going to live forever and had lived near infinite into the past, that there was, that I learned early on as a child from my dad that there were things going on in the universe around us involving these invader forces and and space opera and stuff that were very very real and um and it, they they really I was very very curious about that stuff and my dad would only tell me so much and then he'd be like well I can't tell you anymore you're going to get sick and I'd be like oh, well then why'd you tell me anything at all right um and of course he was alluding to you know, the Xenu story or other things that he had learned, you know, that were confidential. And he wouldn't, he would lead me right up to the door, but he wouldn't let me, you know, he wouldn't take me through uh, because he was being a good Scientologist. So these were ideas that I've had from a very, very young age. The idea that I have a reactive mind. There's some part of my mind that is evil and, and and it makes me act evil. And the only way to deal with that reactive mind is to sort of shove it aside and not operate with it, whatever that's supposed to mean. I'm just supposed to sort of figure that out. 
This was as a kid. I was told, don't be banky. Put your reactive mind on the shelf. You know, stop being banky. And the bank being another term for the reactive mind. So this was how I was raised. These were, this was how I would be controlled as a child, right? If I was having a tantrum or something, stop being banky. It was instantly assigned to this, you know, sort of nameless shape or not nameless, but shapeless, you know, sort of energy field or something. I didn't even understand it that well. And um, yet I was sure that these things were true. I was told that the brain is just a switchboard between me, my body, and my Thetan, me as a, as a spiritual entity, right, who I really am. So I'm controlling the body via the brain, which is just a switchboard that's receiving my spiritual commands or something. I didn't even understand it that much. I was just sort of like, what? Okay. You know, so the brain was a switchboard. This was something that was told to me before I even really understood what a brain was. <laughs> you know? um, these were points of indoctrination and they stuck with me for a really long time. You know, that's the point of indoctrination is to lay in ideas that are always going to be there. And everything else is going to align to those things. And when that happens, you know, to adults um, and they're not, you know, and their power of choice isn't consulted and their critical thinking is disavowed or not allowed at all, then um, you have drones, you have cult members. And and that's not, you know, that's not a, it's not a the basis of a rational society. At least we can say that. So... Um, so you asked, you know, are there some things that I that I understood as intellectually incorrect, but that still stick with me? Uh, yeah, the the whole concept of what a spiritual existence is is informed by that. I I, I don't have another idea of what a spiritual existence might be. It's I've had to really use my imagination to think outside that box that was kind of created for me as a child as to how to think about these things. I have since uneducated myself out of the whole reactive mind nonsense, but the spirituality question still sits there because it's it's a faith based question. You can't you know you can't really objectively scientifically break that thing down and take it apart. So you know so what do I do with that? Well, like I've said, it just sort of sits there as kind of a hope of like wow that would be that'd be kind of great. Now I'm not so sure, you know, now I now I have doubts even about that as I've lived more life and thought about this more and, you know, thought about what it would be like to live forever and realizing that that ain't such a great existence if if it's in a human context, stuff like that, you know. So um, so some of this stuff still sticks with me because I, I, I just don't know another way to think about these things, you know. And uh, as I learn more and grow and, and uh, talk to other people about it, I get other ideas and ways of thinking about these things. And it's always, oh, wow, I hadn't thought about it that way, you know, and I love that. That's a, that's a, that's a wonderful way to, to, to go through and, and learn things and reevaluate stuff. So, um, so it's an ongoing process for me, but, um, but I just thought I would, would be clear about that indoctrination versus education point because I thought that would be... Um, you know, useful to share with you guys. So there you go.